G'day, Rotten Lot. Welcome back to the channel. I've got bass player Steve with me. Hey, man. How are you? I am very well. Thank you. Today on the pedal board, we have from uh, the amazing people at Laney, the Digbeth Bass Preamp. Now, I know you've already got a good tone, but if you're chasing a different tone or a, uh, you know you want to be a, a bit more tweakability to your preamp section, this is the pedal for you. Plus, it's got a mountain of ins and outs and a few other tricks up its sleeve. But essentially, it's a bass preamp that gives you two different voices and a whole heap of tone shaping options. So, uh, I've got Steve in to help out. Um, Steve. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. That's all right. On this cold winter night. <laughs> it is absolutely it's freezing. freezing. It's freezing out there. Mind you, I've had the heater cranked up so much all day, I've had to turn it off uh, because it was too hot in here. But uh, all right, talk me through your rig tonight, Steve. Tonight we've got a, um, a custom-made P bass, uh, passive of course, and we're playing through a Carvin B2000 head. If you can see that just in that. the back there behind me. How many watts? Well, tonight we're playing with 1,300. <laughs> Matt? 1,300 watts. And for those of you that are uh, going to comment in there, yes, Steve is the bass player from the, the Picassos, from the band, uh, that I sing and play guitar in, which is awesome. And Rod used to as well, but he left us because he doesn't love us anymore. Yes, he does. He loves us. He does not. He moved to South Australia. Anyway. We still love him. Yes, we do. All right, so there is a lot of ins and outs to get through here so on the side i'm going to put some b-roll on the screen while i'm talking so you can see what's going on on the side we have an active input and we have a passive input i've got steve going into the uh, passive input because he's playing a p bass um but you can it does say in the manual to actually experiment and muck around and see how different which one you like best which one you like best now there's also a link output right next to the two inputs and that just gives you your bass signal straight out so you can send that to other processing units or another bass amp or another preamp or whatever you want. Right now across the back as you can see in the provider graphics we have the uh, 9 volt and input and it only takes 100 milliamps which is awesome because it means you can run it off pretty much any aftermarket power supply which is sweet. Um, it's got a headphone out so that you can uh, do some silent practice if you want and not wake up the baby Very or your handy nurse wife if she does a uh, night shift. Uh, it's also got an auxiliary in so you can bash a drum machine into it or some backing tracks and jam along with your favorite tunes. Then it's already got a DI output. Uh, now the DI output gives you the uh, option to get your sound out of it pre-EQ or post-EQ. That's where the one switch is there. I'll put a circle around it. And the other one is a ground left, so if you've got a nasty buzz, if you've got a fridge on the same circuit or something like that, but it's making a buzzing sound, you can hit that switch and the buzz goes away. It's Very pretty handy. awesome. That's handy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then on this side, uh, we have a send and return, as you can see there, for um, the effects loop. And then, of course, the output that goes off to your uh, bass amp. Now, just for um, shoots and giggles today, Today, I um, have put this Boss Phase Shifter in there. Stevie Baby, if you just want to play. So that's in the uh, effects loop, which is awesome because if you've got a noisy pedal or a fuzz pedal or anything like that, you can just chuck it in there and keep it out of your nice clean signal path so you get your actual bass sound through uh, to your amp without having to go through 28 pedals or effects or whatever you want. Effects loops are awesome for that. Right, to the top of the pedal, the business end of the pedal. The bypass actually has two modes. You can turn it on and off. Or if you hit this switch, you can actually turn the bypass into a mute switch. We need one of those uh, for the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Permanently on. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. No, we're only joking, Paulie, you're a uh, champion. So you know, that's really handy. Now, this is the uh, tube section where you can turn the tube on and off. Now, it also has two different modes. You can select the tube preamp, 
and then it can flick over to the FET prayer, which is a much cleaner one. So the tube prayer gives you the option of having some overdrive, like a normal tube, and the FET one gives you heaps of headroom, but lots of nice warmth, extra, a bit of extra girth in there as well, like a FET prayer. Um, so you can use that to switch between them, or you can mix them both together and just turn them on and off. So that's pretty cool, turn them on and off together. It is handy. Yeah, I think if it was me, I wouldn't have mine on mute, I'd have mine on off and I'd have this one flicking between them. Mm. So, now Steve is gonna have a little play and I'm gonna show you the difference between the valve preamp and the FET preamp by twiddling some knobs. Go for it, man. So you can hear the FET has a bit more brightness and it has a, a bit, bit more, more roundness. Now we're only going through studio monitors here today. We're not going through one of Steve's cabs, cabs because I'm not a mania. I didn't want to make him drag it all the way over here just to do a video for me. So we're going through the studio monitors, but there's a noticeable difference in the clarity and punch with the FET. Yep. And of course, as you heard with the drive, I turned that up and you can hear it sort of distorting like it's a tube. It's breaking up, yep. Ah, uh, which one did you prefer, buddy? I, I actually like the FET. Not a big distortion. I don't use a lot of distortion when we play, I guess, so it's probably personal preference, but I like that. I like the FET sound. I like the edge that you get with that. All right. So it's on FET now. Just play for me. So I've just got it back to Unity volume now I flicked it on and off a couple of times so you guys could hear the difference now while we're in the fit mode which stevie baby likes i'm going to go through the tone stack because there's a couple of tone options this first knob here called tilt is actually what they call a seesaw eq hmm. so as it's dropping up the bass it's taking off the treble and as you're turning up the treble it's dropping off the bass, and it's a pretty drastic tone shaping effect. I'll get Steve to play and I'll roll it from side to side. Now, before Stevie plays, all these tone knobs have a little click in the 12 o'clock position. Oh, so it takes you back to center. And that's one of my favorite things. Yep. So you can always, even in the dark, you'll know exactly where middle is, and then you can reduce or increase the frequencies you want. But anyway, here's the tilt. Andy. So you can hear the more treble you get, the more bass you have, and then the more bass you have, the less treble you get. And that's why they call it a seesaw. In this case, it's a tilt, but it's actually a seesaw EQ. All right, I'm just gonna go through the bass. Um, I think I clipped the channel once or twice there, but we'll uh, see how we go. I'm gonna go through all the bass while Steve plays. Sounds good. Big range in there. I like that. I'll go through the mids and then we'll go through. So I'm going to go through the uh, the upper mids and then the treble. I'm going to leave the uh, lower mids because there's a switch that you can switch to select different bands. So cool. All right, here we go. Here's the upper mids. Put it back in the middle. Now I'm going to go through the highs, trebles. All right, I've 
I've put that back on 12 o'clock. Now, um, I can't hear much difference there, but my ears don't have much treble left in them. <laughs> Those frequencies are out of order. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Now, you might see this little switch here. You can see it here. Uh, the first one gives you more upper mids, like in the upwards position gives you more upper mids. In the middle, it gives you a wider range of lower mids. And then in the bottom position, it gives you a lower mid cut. So that knob there, that three-way toggle switch, affects this low mid knob. So I'm going to get you to play a little bit, and I'm going to... Go through each of the three? And just turn it from left to right, yeah. Yep. I think I've left everything at sort of 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And that switch is in the middle, so it's just like a wide general lower mids. Right. Um, right. I'm going to let Steve now have a play around with it. I'm going to get him to EQ it the way he would EQ it. I know we're only going through a studio monitor, so it's a bit harder than, than normal, but I'm going to get you to talk us through it, Stevie baby, as you do it. Let's play it first and have a listen. You play with those last, those three yeah. middle position ones again, well, and it was the bottom. When you flipped it to the bottom, we had um, a wider range of, of choices. I think. Yeah. Right. So that's going to cut through when you're a bit muddy in the room. Yeah. That'll cut through and punch through and you'll... It's you'll so them. funny you say that because that's exactly what the manual said. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't read the manual. Yeah, the manual said on the bottom position, you get that up a bit, you'll uh, cut through any mix. I'm just going to play around with the bass now. You tell me where you like it. <laughs> bit of extra bass? Yeah. What does yeah. that do? Uh, well, it's easy to hear for me. Again, with the, uh, hasn't got a lot of highs, but um, to me, I, I tend to like that the classic. That's why I play a lot of P basses. But I, I like that classic P bass tone. I like that warmth and that little bit of bottom end. But it's got an edge to it, so I can hear it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like I said, cut through the mix. Cut through the mix. Do you want me to muck around with the upper mids now? Try them again. They didn't respond as much. All right, let's do it. I, there's certain songs I guess I would I'd be going for that tone. Um, for with that with that crackiness, yeah, just a little bit of crackiness. You like that smoother sort of? I do like that smoother rail went more rounded end. All right, um, last personally. one. Uh, uh, we'll do the treble. Tell me how much treble you want or don't want. We're just going to keep talking while he's uh, playing as well. But you're just going to see my hand and hear the bass. Anyway, here we go. Not making a huge difference, is it, to my ears? Not in this room, and not to my ears either. But and not um, through the studio monitors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, that is a pretty... Uh... It's it's versatile. It's got a lot of sounds in it, a lot of tones in it. It's Is it a little bit... 
is it a bit uh, fiddly for a live gigging? I don't know. Is it? Is it? Um, I'd probably be dialing in my set and forget tone. Yep. And and walk away. Yeah, it'd be cool if you could save a uh, like a preset. Yeah. And it's so even yeah. if you bumped a knob or a switch or something and you can go straight back to it. Yeah. You could just have it there to recall it. But I think. In terms of its input flexibility, its output flexibility, its connectivity on the back, its ability to have an effects loop, which keeps your signal nice and clean. Um, I think it would be quite a useful tone shaping it's got, tool. Yeah. I like the fact that you can blend the tube and the FET yeah. and um, get the best of both worlds or get that, that combination that you're after. Um, but it has got it's got a really nice sound, and as I said, it's got that versatility. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I think it's really impressive. Um, now, in terms of an actual build quality thing, the pots feel amazing, the switches feel amazing, all the jacks feel amazing. So that, I mean, because it's a laney, that alone sort of tells me it's been built really well. But I, I think they've put a lot of time into working out. Okay, you need a DI out, a direct out. So there's actually four. Five outputs. Wow. Yeah. So you've got your standard output, yep. your effects send, you've got your DI output, you've got your link coming straight in. Uh, what was the fifth one? Headphone output. Oh, yeah, well, and the headphone output. Yeah, which five. Is really handy. Yeah. Five outputs. Yeah. So, you know, if it was going to be the center of your, your rig, if it was on a pedal board, I think it'd be pretty handy to, yep. for that. Yep. Um, and I think it sounds great. And I, obviously, it's such a complex pedal, you would need to have your rig set up and spend lots of time playing with it and tweaking and just getting it right, you know? Exactly, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I think it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. For coming along. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, no worries. I appreciate it. This video has gone for almost 20 minutes. It's like one of the longest videos I've ever made. <laughs> That's because you don't want to go back outside. It's too cold. No, it, feels like, in here. it feels like it's about to snow. And for Australia, that's really weird, but it does actually feel like it's about to snow. Anyway, thank you, Laney, for sending us this. We really appreciate it. Um, we appreciate it sending it to us to having a muck around with. Thank you, Steve, for coming in. Thanks for the invite, Matt. Always a pleasure. Thank you, you guys, for uh, clicking on that thumbnail and spending some time with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe. All that good stuff really helps the channel out. And it's absolutely free to you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. See ya.